Hey, I'm bored. <laughs> So basically, you saw from the title, I'm going to be swapping the rear diff with a 369 um, out of an Infiniti G G35. I don't remember the year. I'll have to go through all that a little bit later on. Um, reason I'm going to be doing the diff now is because I have a subframe that I'd also like to swap into this car. I, when I had the accident way back when, got a bit of a um, an impact to the rear subframe. Now the subframe took that impact and it's kind of given my rear wheel just a little bit too much um, toe out. Took the impact right here. What that did is it put a bit of a twist on this little joint right here. Um, and I did measure up all the, all the mounting points and everything seems to be square as far as the unibody goes. It's just this guy right here. Since this is all aluminum, this kind of just twisted just enough to where this spring bucket, which is also your lower control arm, um, it twisted just enough. Luckily, this thing was like, I don't know, maybe $55, 56 bucks at the junkyard. And like I said, while I'm in there, that's gonna be swapped out for this guy. The rear differential in a 350Z has two different options that come in the Zs. The automatics had like a 330 something that I'll put down here. Um, the manuals had like a 350, I'll put them both down here. So yeah, it's not gonna make a massive difference, but it's going, well actually it might. Um, going from the automatic to the 369 is gonna be pretty ridiculous, I think. So I'm gonna go drive it first. Uh, I'm gonna try and get some baselines to kind of compare. All right, here we go. Third gear, 30 to 50. Okay, well that was fun. Um, yeah, this has a lot more front balance. Like there's a lot more weight in the front than I thought there was, which is why I put the jack like a little bit back here. I should have put the jack butt right here. So if you're doing this and dropping the diff on your own, just be sure either to well, actually do both of these things. Make sure you have it properly balanced and don't put any body parts or anything important underneath it because there's a darn good chance it's gonna fall and crush it. But I figure this is a good time to talk about diff ratios. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that this was a 330 something, which means that for every one rotation from here, you're going to get 3.3 something rotations from here. So basically three and a third rotations. And I put a bolt in here to mark it. So I started out with them both pretty much up top. As, a, as up top as I'm gonna get, right? So I'm starting it right here in this notch here on this guy, and I'm starting it dead center on this guy. So if I rotate this one full circle, watch this guy. So there's one, and I haven't moved the whole way around yet. 
there's two. And we're gonna get one more. So there's three, but notice I haven't quite lined up here again yet. So what I'll do is I'll line it up perfectly where I was before, or as close to where I was before. This is, this is good enough for accuracy. And you'll notice that it ended up just about over here. Now, if you were to take a compass or a ruler or, you know, one of those things that measures um, uh, a circle and the distance around a circle, blah, 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 you would measure that this is about a third of the way around, which means that the gear ratio is 3.3 something, right? So about three and a third. Um, now, on the other diff, I'll go grab that and pull it up here. We'll do the same exact thing and we'll see where this bolt ends up. My guess, if I have the right diff, which I'm pretty sure I do, is it's not gonna be right in the middle of the bottom, but it's gonna be just past it, maybe right around here. So hang tight and I'll be right back with that one. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that, hey, this looks a little different. <laughs> um, it is. So the Infinity, for some reason, they decided to put a three bolt flange on the Infinity, whereas the Nissan gets a four bolt that's fine, it should be fine. Um, I'm just gonna crack this thing open and I'll be able to swap the input shaft or the input flange out of the diff from the old one into the new one. So it should just bolt up fine. So I set this one up a little differently so you can kind of see this rotation a little bit better, but I did the same thing as far as the rotations go. I got this as close to top dead center with this being centered as well. And we'll just do one rotation here and count these out. So, let's see, we're gonna have, there's one. God, this diff feels smooth, I don't know, it might just be in my head, two, three, and now, yup, this is definitely, definitely a 3.7. So, with this one back to where it was, we've come all the way this far around. That's a pretty dramatic difference. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be that. I mean, I know exactly what it was supposed to be, but like just the, if, for, for reference, the first diff ended up about where this bolt hole is. So we've rotated a whole third more. Um, what that means is better acceleration, worse fuel economy, which I don't really care about, and just an overall completely different feel of the car. Oh, and I almost forgot, I figured I would also mention, this one has been kind of like my holy grail diff um, for the reason it has the better gear ratio, but also, if you'll notice, it is also limited slip. Sure, it's a viscous limited slip, just like that one was, um, but viscous is better than open diff. guy right here sticks out way too far um, the drive shafts in the automatic 07 and 08 uh, g35s they have uh, a recess in the end of them so that little shaft right there can actually slide in there and it actually helps to align them too um, the 350z's don't so I'm gonna have to actually cut that off um, which is no big deal I'm just gonna take the cut off wheel to it with the angle grinder. It doesn't have to be exact or precise. I'm gonna make it nice and clean so it doesn't have any sharp edges. Try and maintain as much balance as I possibly can. Um, once I get all this taken care of, then I'm gonna be taking the subframe out the rest of the way because I stopped doing that last night. And then I'll be able to throw the subframe in and then the new diff. <laughs>
Okay, so, and of course, the helicopter decides to fly by right when I'm turning this back on. Um, as you can see, I got everything put back together. Uh, new diff, new subframe. I didn't bother filming the reinstall, reassembly, because I didn't really think it was necessary. Uh, if you can take a diff and a subframe out, you can surely put one in. In fact, it's a lot easier to install than it is to remove. Um, and also I did, I actually dislocated my shoulder uh, just apparently a little bit after my camera shut off in that last clip. Uh, it ran out of battery and shut off right as I was pulling the subframe down. I went down on my shoulder in the wrong way and it, it popped right out. And that was a lot of bad words. So it's probably best that the camera wasn't running. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, now that I've got everything put back together, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it lifted in the rear like this, and I'm going to um, basically just start the car and run it in gear, um, and then come back here, and yes, don't worry, I've got it all kinds of chalked up in front, and nothing's going to roll around, um, but basically I want to come back here and listen for anything weird, look for any shutters or anything that might be out of the ordinary before I actually go and take it on a drive. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I know I said I was going to drive it last night, and I did. Um, I actually got halfway around the block, and then I realized that I didn't remember what <clears throat> what tests I had done to set the original times. Um, it drove great, so I figured I would just wait until day. Plus, uh, the first test drive was during the middle of the day, and it was, it was probably about 60 degrees outside. And today, it is about 60 degrees outside, so I figured that would be a little bit more accurate of a test if I just waited until the daylight anyway. Um, so I went in and did the tests and I did as as good of, you know, YouTube math <laughs> as, as I could um, to get the differences in the two. And it actually, it was a bigger difference than I thought it was gonna be. Um, the 30 to 50 was 0.76 seconds faster with the new diff. And then the 30 to 60 actually, I, the best I could come up with was 0.91. Um, I did try and kind of synchronize them as like down to the sound, down to um, a, as fine of a detail as I possibly could. Obviously, this is not a very that's a cat. This is not a very scientific method or or way of of testing this. I don't have a V box or anything like that, which I don't really care that much. The main thing is is I could feel a difference, I could hear a difference, um, and on camera you can actually see a difference. So. Uh, what I wanted to do, because I know a lot of people are going to be skeptical and everything uh, of just, you know, oh, these are his numbers, of course he come up with them, or blah, blah, blah. I actually, I tried to overlay the clips. Um, did not alter the speed of any of them, didn't do anything like that. Mainly what I wanted to do was be able to see if I could see a difference, first and foremost, on camera, but also if I could hear a difference. And believe it or not, the... The, the main thing you can tell a difference in here is actually the sound. So let me flip this around and I'll actually, I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So the, the quality of this is gonna be terrible right now just because it's in preview mode and I have a slow computer, but you can see I've got them overlaid here. The one on the left is gonna be the before and the one on the right is gonna be the after. Like I said, I tried to synchronize them as, as well as I possibly could. Eh, I might as well let you hear both of them. So this one right here is the 30 to 50 run. And it's not as noticeable, but you can definitely tell that there's a difference in the engine speed. So let me go ahead and play this one first. God, the VQ sounds like a freaking trumpet. Anyway, um, I don't know if you can tell on that one i think the 30 to 60 is a little more obvious i'm going to put you down closer to the speakers so hopefully i can get the the audio coming through i also have a fan on so that might affect it but um let's see if we can get this one to come through yeah so 
but yeah long story short i'm very happy with it um like i said really the only thing that i was going for was for the car to feel quicker and it does and i'm happy with where the the gear changes are um i wasn't going for you know a world record beating car because this is a 350c z let's face it um but if you have any of you have any questions um shoot a comment below let me know and i'd be happy to help